the other day, I guess it wasn't Friday, what was it, probably Thursday, we talked about um, we talked about ratios and proportions. Do you remember what a proportion was? So if I said one half equals what four over what eight. That right there is a proportion. Why is this a proportion? Because you have one fraction set what? Equal to another fraction. Okay, if they're equal to each other, this whole thing is called a proportion. And we're gonna use that word a lot. When I first introduced that word to you, I said did I write that? Right? Yeah, proportions. All right, so those that's a proportion. I should just not put the plural on there. All right, that's a proportion. Each one of these is a ratio, okay? So one to two, that would be a ratio. So if we have two ratios equal to each other, we call that whole thing a proportion. Everybody got that? All right, so that's just, um, that's just review, just vocab, because we're going to use that word quite a bit today. Let's talk about something that's in proportion. Um... I should have had this ready, but I could probably find something pretty quick here. I'm going to find a picture. Let me find some pictures. Where do I have pictures on here? Probably here. I'm not struggling. It's just wondering where I had them. That's all. Who said I was struggling? Uh, let's just go to this. I won't use... And then we'll go to this. And then we'll go to... This. I'm just trying to find a picture. All right, here's a nice picture. It's got me in it. How about that? <laughs> Look at that. And it's got my friends from Gettysburg. I teach this. Um, I don't know if I told you this, but I teach a. I don't think he's that short though. He must be. I think we were on rocks because we were in Gettysburg and we were on the battlefield tour, and so he must have been on a smaller rock or something like that because he's not really that short. Um, but anyway. Uh, these are my two friends that I teach with it. We call it GYE, the Gettysburg Yearbook Experience. Isn't that wow. exciting? <laughs> yes. Yearbook people have heard about this. GYE, my photography class, has heard about this. So I've been teaching at it for, I lost track, probably over 10 years now. And um, it's, a, it's basically a yearbook camp. And that's why they call it GYE, because it sounds a little cooler than going to your book camp, you know, because it sounds a little dorky. So, <laughs> But it's really cool. There's, there's probably, depends on the year, but um, there's probably five, six, sometimes 700 kids that go to this thing. And I teach a digital photography class. And so this was taken on a tour. It's like one of the last nights we take a tour of Gettysburg, and it's just kind of nice, so the sun was going down. So anyway, I just found that picture. So let's talk about proportion. Uh, if you notice what I did, it was when I placed it, it was really, really big, and then I made it smaller. Now, I don't, you probably don't know exactly what I did or didn't see what I did, but if I grab this corner right here, you guys have worked with desktop publishing stuff before, haven't you? Okay. And if I wanted to resize the picture, I could resize it a couple ways. Now, I could resize it like this, but what's going to happen when I let go? It's called all be skinny. Now, does that look right? No. Does that look, what, what's a good geometry word? Does it look in proportion? No, it doesn't. This looks way skinnier than it should. Would you agree? All right, so that's what it originally looked like. Or I could grab this end right here and go like this. What's it going to do here? It's going to stretch it out. Is that in proportion? No, it's not. All right. How did I get back to the original one? Do you know? Shortcut. What is it? Yeah, what's the shortcut, keyboard shortcut? Control Z, right? Control Z gets back to it, all right? So I figured just show some uh, little shortcut things. And that works for a whole lot of programs, Control Z. That's your uh, that's your friend, right? If you're doing something and you mess up or whatever, and you're like, oh, man, I wish I could go back to what I just did. Well, don't touch anything else. Hit Control Z, and it'll go back. All right. I don't know if you know this, but if I wanted to make this in proportion, do I just take it? I watch my other hand. It's, I'm not touching the keyboard. What, it, and do I just kind of like just go out like that and you say, oh, that kind of looks like it's in proportion. Uh, it looks a little skinny. Maybe I'll go like that. That looks a little better. Maybe I'll go like that. Is that really what you want to do? No. Here's the original one. Do you remember anybody know how to do that on a on the keyboard? What do you – you click the corner and then you press a button on the keyboard. Do you know what that button is? No. Yearbook people don't know? My goodness, you should know this. Anyway, you hit the shift key. Hit the shift key. Watch. If I hit the shift key and I move it, watch. I'm moving this mouse or the pen around, but look what it's doing. It's keeping it what? In proportion. So let's make this small. I'm going to copy and paste it. 
and then watch. I'm going to make this bigger. If I want to make it bigger, but I want to keep it in proportion. I don't want to make it skinnier, right? I don't want to make it wider or stretched out. I don't want to stretch it at all. I want to keep it exactly in proportion so everybody looks the same. I just want to make the picture bigger. So I grab the corner, hit the shift key, and then scooch it out like that, and now it's in proportion. So these two pictures are in the same proportion. What does that mean? If I compare the um, if I compare the width to the height, we'll call it the width and the height, okay? If I compare the width to the height, whatever that number is, take this divided by this, it's going to be the same thing on this one, okay? I could take the length of the width, compare it to the height, and that ratio is going to be equal to each other, right? So whatever the ratio is. Now, I have no idea what this is. I'm just going to stick some numbers in here. Is that all right? Click off of this. So let's say... Um, Let's just say it's a five by seven. Is that all right? That's a that's a number that you're used to for pictures, right? If you get a picture, what do you need? Yes, go. So um, this is seven and this is five. What if I made this twice as big? What is this going to be right here? It's going to be fourteen, and this is going to be what? That's going to be ten. So guess what's true about both of those things? They are in what? Proportion. So if I compared 5 to 7 and then I compared 14 to 10, what should be true about these two? They should be equal to each other. Okay. Now we could always reduce it to see if it's the same, but we could also do what else? We learned this a little while ago. Could cross multiply. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's. Yeah, what did I, I was going to say? This is not working. <laughs> right. I should do. Let's go. I know I went 5 to 7. Let's do it like that. Right. Thanks for pointing that out because I started cross multiplying. I was like, wait a minute, this isn't working and it's supposed to work. So let's try it again. 5 to 7, is that all right? Since we say 5 by 7. And then what would this be over here? It would be 10 by 14. Now let's see if it works. So we cross multiply. 5 times 14 is 70. Cross multiply here. 7 times 10 is 70. Do they equal each other? Yes, they do. So guess what? They are in what? In proportion, okay? So we talked about these are basically rectangles. A picture normally is a rectangle, and we saw that they are in proportion, okay? Now, what's true about the angles that they formed here? What Did this angle change? If this was a rectangle, what was this angle down here on this picture? It was 90 degrees, wasn't it? Did I change the angle at all? No, I didn't change the shape. The shape stayed exactly the same. Now, if I made everybody skinnier like I did earlier, if I stretched everybody out, was the shape the same? No, absolutely not. Okay, I didn't change the shape of it. All I changed was what? The size, right? The size of it. So the size changed, but the shape stayed the same. Does that make any sense? The same thing could hold true with um, geometric figures. Okay, let's take this little triangle right here and let's put it up here like this. I'm going to copy and paste it so I have two, two of these to deal with. Now, if I want to change the uh, size of it, but I don't want to change the shape, again, what do I do? Grab a corner and click what? Shift. And then I scooch it like this. Now, the shape stayed exactly the same. So what do you think that means about the angles? What do you think is true about that angle there and this angle right here? They're exactly the same. And what's cool about this program that I couldn't do on a whiteboard is this. I could actually grab this triangle, move it over, and watch this. Line them right up. Look at those top angles right there. They're exactly the same, aren't they? You see that? It's kind of cool, isn't it? What do you think is true about this bottom left one and this bottom left one? They're going to be the same as well. All right? See that? They're the same. What about this one over here? That's going to be the same. So even though this is gigantic, this is huge compared to this one, the angles are still exactly the same. Now, what about this, the lengths of the sides? Well, obviously, the lengths of the sides aren't the same, are they? Look, it was that long on the little one, and it was that long on the big one. Everybody follow me on that? But what do you think might be true about the sides, though? We kind of talked about it over here. The angles are all the same, but what was true about the sides? They were in proportion. You follow me? They were in proportion. Okay, so that's what we say when we uh, talk about the sides. So... If I changed the shape, or if I change the size and not the shape, the sides would be in proportion. Well, we have a name for all this stuff. When I have a triangle and all I did was just change the size of it and I kept the shape exactly the same, we call these things similar. Now, in this case, it's a triangle, but I'm going to call them polygons, okay? 
because we can do that to not just triangles. We could do it to four-sided figure, like I did the picture. We could do it to five, six, seven sides, whatever. Okay. So we call these similar polygons. So what must be true about similar polygons? Well, two things. What did we say about the angles here? They're all equal to each other. Okay. So the angles, let's just write that in there. Actually, let's do this. Not all the angles are equal, just which ones are equal, the ones that match up, right? Or what word? We've used that a lot this year. The ones that match up to each other would be considered the what angles? Starts with a C. Well, they are congruent, but we say that they're the ones, and it's not coordinating, you're getting closer, not consecutive. Say it. Corresponding, right, the corresponding angles, the ones that match up with each other, okay? So those two angles up at the top, they correspond to each other, right? So let's write that down. Let's just not say the angles are equal. Let's say what? That the corresponding angles are equal, all right? So corresponding angles, I'll shorthand angles, are equal. Or if you want to say congruent, that's fine as well. So when they're similar polygons, the corresponding angles are equal. But... What's true about the sides? Are the sides equal to each other? No. Are the corresponding sides equal to each other? No. If the corresponding sides were equal and the corresponding angles were equal, guess what the two triangles would be? The same. Give me a better word than that. Congruent. That's right. Look, if I took these two, I copied and pasted. If I took these two right here and one was exactly the same as the other one, guess what's true about those two triangles? They're congruent to each other, right? But is this triangle congruent to this triangle? Absolutely not, because it's way bigger, right? Congruent means they have to fit exactly on top of each other, all right? They do not fit exactly on top of each other, even though the angles are the same. So the corresponding angles are equal, and let's do that. Put it in here. So this angle equals this one, this one equals this one, and this one equals this one right here. And let's call it ABC, and let's call it XY, oops. X, Y, Z. Is that all right? So what's true about the angles? They're all equal to each other, right? Corresponding angles are equal. But what's true about the sides? What about A, B, and X, Y? The corresponding sides. So the corresponding sides are not equal to each other. What are they? They're in proportion. Very good. The corresponding sides are in proportion. Hope you guys are writing these things down. Some of you guys cannot afford to have your heads down on the desk okay, or not taking notes. And I'm just warning you right now, you're big kids, and if you decide that that's fine with you, then I guess that's fine with me. It's really not, but we'll have to just say it is. So don't blame anybody, please, don't blame anybody but yourself for not knowing this stuff if you're not going to pay attention right now. Okay, That's all i got to say about that. I'll just keep moving on. So that's true about similar polygons. Those two things are true. Hopefully you wrote that down. The corresponding angles are equal and the corresponding sides are in proportion. So let's talk about the corresponding angles being equal. Let's just, this is the easy part of this. Let's um, write down what angles are actually equal to each other. So in these two triangles, what angles are actually equal to each other here? Angle A would equal what? Angle X. This is easy. This is hardly even worth talking about. The next part is really what I want to talk about. What else is equal to to this? Angle B is equal to what? Angle Y. And what's the other one? Angle C equals angle Z. All right, that was pretty easy. You saw that, didn't you? Here's what I really want to show you. Let's talk about the sides being in proportion, the corresponding sides. Let's take one of the sides over here. What's one of the sides over here? AC. All right, we can take AC. And Scoot this up just a little bit, all right? So what I want to say is I want to say they're in proportion. So I want to compare AC from one triangle to another one. So what is the similar, or I'm sorry, what's the corresponding side over here to AC? AC and what? XZ. Everybody see that one? How do I know they're corresponding? Because look, AC is opposite this angle with two arcs, right? And XZ is opposite the other angle with two arcs. Everybody got that? So you know they're corresponding to each other. So AC, if I compare that to XZ, that should equal what else? I went AB, I'm sorry, AC to XZ. What other sides do I have over here? AB. And let's compare that to what? If I compare AB to what? XY. 
I put Y here, didn't I? Should have stopped me. Nobody saw it. Should have put a Z there. It's getting ahead of myself, I guess. All right. So everybody see that? A, B, and X, Y correspond to each other. What else corresponds? There's only one more. B, C. Good. B, C to what? Y, Z. Now, what do these represent? They represent numbers, don't they? They're going to eventually put some numbers in here, and you're going to have to solve for some missing sides. And this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to set it up. Everybody see that? So watch. This, I'm going to put one, R, or one tick mark and one tick mark. But look, this is a small tick mark, and that's a big tick mark. Does it mean these two sides are equal to each other? No, it doesn't mean they're equal to each other, but it does mean that they're what? Corresponding to each other. All right? Does that make sense? All right, so don't get confused. Just because I put one tick mark doesn't mean they're equal. They don't do this in the book. This is just an easy way to figure this out. Um, let's go with this one. What if I put two tick marks here? What am I going to do here? Put two big tick marks. What if I put three little tick marks here? What am I going to do here? Three big tick marks. Again, they don't do this in the book, but I can see which ones are corresponding, can't I? All right, so this one to this one, right? It's a ratio. We make it a fraction. So this one to this one equals... This one with the 2 to the other one with the 2, and this one with the 3 to the other one with the 3. That's what we've got right here, isn't it? And they're going to throw some numbers in here with these sides. You're going to have to find some missing sides. You're going to have to do it by cross-multiplying like we've done before. So a lot of the stuff, all the stuff we did before, one whole lesson, okay, was preparation for what we're going to do on this. Make sense? Let's uh, talk about that word similar again, okay? S Congruent had a symbol. What was the uh, symbol for congruent? Do you remember what that looked like? An equal sign with a what? Little squiggle. Well, the um, the uh, symbol for similar is not the equal sign. It's just the squiggle. All right. So if you talk about two triangles being similar to each other, you just put the squiggle and that's it. Not two squiggles, just one. Everybody got that? So let's talk about this. What if I said that this triangle, this little triangle, was similar to this triangle right here? How would you write that? Triangle, let's call it anything. Let's call it ABC. Is similar, what's the symbol for similar? One little squiggle, two triangle. Now watch, remember like on congruent, they have to match up. So what matches up with A over here? And which one matches up with B? And then C, Z. Everybody got that? So they have to match up. So the A and the X have to equal, the B and the Y and the C and the Z have to equal each other. It's important that you write it that, that way. It's very, very close to what we did when we did the um, congruent triangles, isn't it? Yep. So that's how we would write two similar triangles to each other. Um, let's do a little bit of an example, kind of an example. Uh, let's see. I'll just draw a triangle here. Just draw one that kind of looks like the one in the book. Looks like that. It's a little bit shorter. It's a little bit longer. About right there. And I'm going to group it and then copy and paste it. Now watch what I'm going to do. Now if I just copy and paste, what's true about these two triangles? They're congruent to each other. But if I hit the shift key, you just have to trust me on this, I'm hitting the shift key and hit a corner, and then I go like this and make it smaller, what did I just do to it? They're in proportion, aren't they? Which means the two triangles are, what's the word? Similar, similar to each other, okay? Different size, but the same shape. So they're similar to each other, all right? Um, let's label this one. Let's label this A, B, C. And watch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even um, twist this around a little bit like this. And I'm really going to mess with you a little bit here. Watch this. I'm going to, let's say, reflect it about, let's see, what, yeah. So what did I do? I twisted it, I flipped it, and I made it smaller, didn't I? Okay, so let's put some letters on here. Let's call this X, Y, Z. I think that's what they did to this. We'll see if they did or not. All right. And um, they tell you. This is what they tell you. Now, you wouldn't be able to figure this out on your own because they didn't tell you anything, did they, as far as the lengths of the sides or the angles or anything. But they tell you this. They tell you that triangle ABC is similar 
to triangle XYZ. Now, just from that information, let's go to the triangle, let's mark some stuff. Just from this information, what does that tell you about this angle A? Angle A would equal what? Angle X, that angle right there. Everybody see that? Because How do I know that? Because it came first, right? What about angle B? Angle B must equal angle Y because that came second. And then, of course, angle C must equal angle Z. Everybody with me on that? It's not always going to be in alphabetical order like that, okay? But they just happen to do it the same way as we did the other one. Now they're going to throw some numbers in here. They're going to tell you that AB is 6 and that XY is 3. Okay? So what I'm going to talk about right now, here's another word. You writing this down? It's called the scale factor. The scale factor. Like how much smaller is this little one than the big one? Is it is it half the size? Is it twice the size? Is it three times the size? Is it one third the size? Okay. Is it two thirds as big as this one? Is it five sevenths as big as this one? We don't know. But we actually can figure this out right here because look, I said that they're similar to each other. Look at this side. First of all, are these two sides in or are they uh, corresponding? How do I know if they're corresponding or not? Well, look at the angle that it's across from. It's across from this angle C, which has three arcs on it. Look at this three right here. What angle is it across from? It's across from the angle with three arcs. So guess what? They're the ones that match up. Or, what's the good geometry word? They're the ones that are what? Corresponding to each other. Okay, so if I know those two are corresponding to each other, we can find this thing called the scale factor. I just compare them. I just do a ratio. I compare, well, let's compare like the big, we'll call it the big to the small triangle. Is that all right? So let's compare the big one to the small one. So what, uh, what's the length of the side of the big one? Six. What's the length of the side of the small one? It's three. Now if I reduce it, what would that reduce to? Two over one. So my scale factor would be, 2 over 1. Or we could say 2 to 1. Do it either way. You could write it as a fraction or write it like this with the colon in between. Everybody with me on that? Okay. So that's our scale factor. That's going to be very important. I'll show you why it's going to be important. Because what if I did this? Now, they made this like super, super easy to uh, figure out um, because it's 2 to 1. 2 to 1 is like real, real simple. But what if I said that this side was 8 and I ask you to solve for this little side little a right there okay it wouldn't be that hard but I want to show you I want to show you the steps that we take what if I told you that this was 8 and I said that this was a and I had to find it everybody with me okay paying attention all right come on now you guys with your heads down aren't gonna have a clue what to do when you get the homework you're not gonna have an idea not even a close to an idea all right, so let's pay attention. Come on, I'm doing this for your own good. I'm not doing it because I'm a mean teacher. I'm trying to get you to stay awake during my boring little lecture. I want you to learn this stuff, okay? So keep your heads up and look up here, and maybe you'll learn something, okay? Maybe at least something will stick when you look at that homework, and you're like, okay, I remember him doing that today. But if your head's on the desk and your eyes are closed, you won't have a clue what I'm doing. So watch. The scale factor is 2 to 1. What we're going to do is set up a proportion. We take the scale factor, 2 to 1, and we set it equal to some other corresponding sides. Do I actually, I lied on that one. Um, let's, call, let's call this one A. You understand why, right? Okay. So look at this. Look at, look at this uh, side right here, AC, which is 8. What angle is it across from? The one with two arcs. Well, which one is across from the one with two arcs here? The A is. So I can compare 8 to A, can I? And remember, if it's in proportion, uh, this, the two fractions must be equal to each other. So this was 2 to 1, so it should equal what? 8 to what? To A. Now how can I solve for A? Cross multiply. All right, and let's see what happens. I always like to do the letters first. So 2 times A is 2A equals 1 times 8 is 8. Divide both sides by 2, and A is 4. And it makes sense that it's 4, doesn't it? Because this side was twice as big as this, or this one was half as big as this one. So this has to be half as big as that. Would you agree? 
All right, so I could have just done that in my head, but sometimes it's not going to be that easy. All right, sometimes the proportions aren't going to always be two to one or three to one or four to one. If it was, it would be really simple. We didn't have to worry about it. But sometimes it's going to be like five to seven or two to three, all right, which makes it a little bit tougher. Everybody got that? Okay, so um, that's how we do that. So what if they told you that this side was... Um, Yeah, I could say two, I think. Yeah, I could do that. So let's say this side was two right here, all right? And you you wanted to find this side. We'll call this B. Now, you should be able to do that in your head, right? Because remember, this is twice as big as this one. So what should this equal? Four. Four, right. Let's just do it this way because you, it's not always going to be that equal or that easy, sorry, to make them equal. So what do we do? we take our scale factor. Our scale factor is super important. That's why I circled it. So we start off with our scale factor, 2 to 1. Now if I want to solve for B, watch, I went 6 to 3 or 2 to 1, right? And I'm going to go, what, B to what? Which one over here corresponds to this side? Okay, the 2 does. Now, it's the only one left, so obviously, but you could also look what? It's opposite the angle with one arc. What's opposite the angle with one arc? This 2. So I could go B to 2. Everybody with me on that? So watch what we do. We cross multiply. 1 times b is b. 2 times 2 is 4. There you go. b is 4. And it works out just the way we thought it should. All right? But I wanted to do the math because the math, uh, it's not always going to be quite so easy. Let's do another example. This is not going to be a uh, triangle. It's going to be a quadrilateral. And the same thing holds true with quadrilaterals. All right, so look at that crazy thing. Let's uh, group it first and copy it and paste it. And then let's see what they do. They shrink it, hit the shift key, right, to keep it in proportion so it's similar. And then I'm going to twist it around like that. And I think that's how they keep it, just like that. This is an example in the book. So that's A, C, D, and F. So they don't go in alphabetical order here. And this is Y and Z and W and V. And here's what they tell you. They say that A, C, D, F, now they just call it quadrilateral. A, C, D, F is similar to V, W, Y, Z. Now some of you guys just blow this stuff off right here. You look at this and you're like, ah, that doesn't mean anything. Absolutely means something. What does that tell you? It gives you a lot of information. It tells you what? Which angles are equal to each other, right? It tells you which angles are equal. So look, A and V are equal. Let's mark them. A and V. Um, C and W are equal. So 2 here and 2 here. Uh, D and Y. So 3 here and Y it's got three as well, and of course, this has got four, and this has four. So that's really important. That tells you a lot of stuff. It really does. All right, so uh, it also tells you the sides, doesn't it? Like AC and VW are corresponding to each other. Everybody see that? AD and VY, CD and WY, they're all corresponding. So you can see which ones are corresponding just from this thing right here call this our similarity statement, all right? So that tells you a lot of stuff. But let's put some numbers in that they tell you. They say that this is 12, this is 9, this bottom is x, this top one is 10, this one is 6, and this one, look at this crazy one, 3y minus 1. And they ask you to solve for x and y, okay? Solve for x and y. Well, first of all, we need to find something. What was that word that I used, or two words that I used that was really, really important? It's sitting right there. Scale factor, right? I want to find the scale factor. So what I want to do is I want to find two sides that correspond to each other and that I actually know the lengths of those sides. So for instance, like the 12. Is there something that corresponds to the 12 down here? How do I know which one corresponds to the 12? Well, it's opposite the what? The 3 arcs, which there's the 3 over here. This one? So which one corresponds to the 12? The 3y minus 1. 
Well, I can't really use that because I don't know what y is. Let's find out what numbers are the same. What about 9? Well, 9 is opposite the 4 arc, right? What's opposite the 4 arc over here? The 6. Everybody see that? So the 9 and the 6 go together. So that's going to be my scale factor. I'll just put SF for scale factor. So it's going to be what? 9 to 6. It's a little easier if you reduce it. So what does that reduce to? 3 to 2. So my scale factor is 3 to 2. I'm going to use that twice to find x and to find y. So now let's, let's do x first. Is that all right? Which one do you think corresponds to x? The 10 does, right. All right. And how do we know which one it is? Well, look, fd, where's fd or df? This one right here. Which one corresponds to df? yz. So 10 and the x go together, don't they? So watch what we do. We take the scale factor, 3 to 2, and we set it equal. If I compared the big one to the small one, what am I going to do here? Compare what to what? X to 10. See what I just did? I went 3 to 2, right? 9 to 6, which is 3 to 2. And then I compared. I went from the big one to the small one. Then I compare the big corresponding side to the small corresponding side. Now, look what I can do to solve for X. I can cross multiply. So let's do that. It's 2X equals 30. Divide by 2, X is... 15, and that's what x is. x equals 15. Make sense? Scale factor is really important, okay? Shouldn't put it in a, I should just put it in a box because circling usually means that's the answer to my question. We'll put it in a box. That's really important, 3 to 2. Let's do y. So again, I do the scale factor. The scale factor is 3 to 2. So which one corresponds to y? We talked about that earlier. Which one is it? It's vz, right? So VZ is this one and this one. What does that correspond to? AF, which is 12. So watch, 3 to 2 equals what to what? What do I put on top? Do I put the Y on top? No, I went from the big one to the small one, so I'm going what? This is the big one, which is 12, to the small one, which is 3Y minus 1. So 12 to 3Y minus 1. You with me? It's not as easy as the other one where we just said it's twice as big, is it? All right, you got to do a little math here. So that's why I wanted to show you that. Make sure you distribute it through this thing right here. So it's going to be 3 times 3y minus 1 equals 2 times 12, which is 24. Let's distribute. That's 9y minus 3 equals 24. Add a 3 to both sides. That gives you 27. Divide by 9, and that gives you 3. So y is equal to 3. And that's all they want you to do. They just want you to solve for X and Y, not plug them back in. That's all they want. And that's the kind of stuff that they're going to give you on this worksheet. Okay? All right. Go back to it and review it. Okay? Some of the early stuff you could probably skip through, but maybe, you know, fast forward on YouTube to this part right here. Look over it. Write it down if you didn't take notes today. Write it down when you watch the YouTube again. And that's going to help you out. Got a worksheet for you, and so that will be due. That will be due tomorrow.